You guarded LeBron, yeah. you guarded Kobe. That's those are your assignment. You going into the game. What's your mindset going into the game? You guarding Kobe. What's your mindset going into the game? Guarding LeBron. And what's your toughest matchup? Well, Kobe will be the tougher matchup. And Kobe is a tougher matchup because he's way more relentless. Bron is more like of, um, he's relentless in a different way. He's going to make the right play. So <laughs> Bron will beat you up, get into the paint and like kick it out. And you like, whoo, shit. <laughs> Where fake Kobe you. is, Kobe will beat you up, get in the paint, pump fake you, pump fake you, spin, pump fake you again, get you in the air, beat you up, and one. And one. Yeah. So, yeah, that's it. He'll, that's like complete embarrassment. You played with Kobe. Yeah. One of the most disciplined mofos, rest his soul. Yeah. One of the most disciplined, the most important thing was basketball. It was no BS, and if you would be, if you were gonna help Kobe win no championship, if he saw you, bro, it drove him crazy. Yeah, he probably wouldn't talk to you if he didn't feel like he was on the path that he was on, and you know I understand that because like-minded people usually connect, you know. So, did you understand it at the time, or as you moved away from it? I understood. I understood it before the time. Right. You know. I. I I come from a winning program, right. high school. You know, my my friends, the people that I played high school basketball, we held each other accountable. Right. And through holding each other accountable, we all, you know, end up going Division One. So I understood that uh, from a young age. How was Kobe able to build a championship locker room? Because I'm looking, you played with Harden, you played mm -hmm. with Chris Paul, you played with LeBron, you played with Kobe, you played with... A lot of guys that's on that set. What's the biggest difference between Kobe and all the guys that I named? What? Because everybody would know. Okay, what's the difference between LeBron and Kobe? So let's let's go with just LeBron and Kobe. What was the biggest difference between them? Uh, I think Kobe is more of a I don't give a fuck if you like it, <laughs> if you like me. This is how we doing it. I think Bron kind of is more <clears throat> conscious of uh, like what's going on. You know, he's more of you know, he's he's more like he's cooler with more people right. than Kobe was. Kobe don't give a fuck if you like him or not. <laughs> That's just the truth. Kobe, he was just that close, cold blooded. Kobe come in like, hey, y'all, we 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 working today. Y'all ain't well help y'all. Yeah, that's I don't care. So when and everybody tells the story like they lose a game and Kobe like, man, take my shoes off. Y'all sorry, mofos don't need to have my stuff on. <laughs> yeah, no, nah, that's, I didn't, I didn't experience that, Kobe. Right. You know, our team wasn't like that team or the teams that he had where he talked to them that way. Right. You know, we were. You had a more veteran ball club because it was you and Powell, Kobe. Yeah. Andrew Biden was kind of the young guy. Fish was, and uh, uh, Fish was still there. When I was, I was 22 at the time. So okay. I was a younger player. Right. Um. But my mentality never was one of a younger player. I always had the I'm on, I have to go get you it. You had a vet mentality. Yeah, yeah I had a, I'm I, I'm on the same thing y'all on. So right. um, my mentality was a mentality was a bit different. So how was it in practice? You you got to guard. You know, hey, obviously you going against Kobe. Yeah. You know he gonna bring it, mm -hmm. and you know you got to bring it because he gonna try to embarrass you, and you're not trying to be embarrassed. No, absolutely not. And I think that's how we start, that's why our relationship was so what it was, because I'm not, I don't care who you are, I don't give a fuck about <laughs> none of that. Right. I'm gonna compete, because I'm a competitor, right. and I wanna beat you just like how you wanna beat me. Right. And I think he understood that. How was it becoming his teammate? Mm -hmm. Because you you guys competed against each other for a number of years, yeah. he dropped 40 on you, you rookie. My rookie year, <laughs> I, I, and you know what's crazy about it? <laughs> uh, Larry Brown had this thing where every player that, whatever city we go to, right. he was going to start you if you're in your home city. Okay. And he started me. <laughs> <laughs> After probably sitting me like 10 games. Right. So, yeah, I wasn't ready for that one. Right. Yeah, but, you know, he did. Uh, did he let you know about it? Who, me? Kobe. Nah, he never, He nah, he didn't really. On the court, he was he was fucking destroying me. Yeah, of yeah. course. But but I'm saying once you came to the Lakers, nah. he like Trev. You remember that forty piece I nah, dropped on you? Nah, he dropped forty on so many people that he probably <laughs> he didn't even remember that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> His only thing was, what are you gonna do to help us right. win? Were you on the Lakers when Kobe demanded the trade? 
Nah, that's before my that time. That's before your time. Yeah. How different do you think Kobe legacy would have been had he been traded? Because I think the thing that's so fascinating mm-hmm. is that he played 20 years mm-hmm. with the same team. Right. Uh, I think it would have been a little bit different just because, I mean, I don't know where he demanded a trade to. Um, Seemed like he wanted to go to Chicago. Chicago. Yeah, I don't think it would have been the same thing. Right. It would have been different. He, he would have been in the shadow of Mike, of Mike you yeah. know, and I don't think he's a person who uh, deserves a shadow. Right. You know, he's his own shadow. How, how demanding was Kobe to win a ring without Shaq? I think he he he. That's something that he it wanted to. Him. It drove him fucking <laughs> sleepless nights. Right. I could probably say that he wanted to prove that, you know, he was who he thought he was. Lamar Odom said that had you played against the Celtics, y'all would have beat him. I would I would like to agree with him with that. So when, when you lose, cause, I mean, that was the series and that you guys had that, that big, they had that big league. I think it was game we three. Was up game. Tw- we was up 22. Yeah. Yeah. And then they came back. Uh, and I remember the thing that I remember Ray Allen just getting to the can and just reverse lit. Oh my God. That's sh- that would, that took all the momentum out of, uh, staples. At the time. Yeah. At the time. So right. from that point on, they just, that, that gave them the utmost confidence and, you know, they took the series after that. But how how is it, how does a young player gain the respect of the veteran players in the locker room? The work ethic, the things that you do every single day to prepare for your opportunity. <clears throat> like, I broke my foot um, earlier in that season, and Kobe would meet me there at the gym. You know, he wouldn't beat me there. He would meet me there, you know, going through my thing, doing my shit. So, like, seeing that, Time after time after time after time, you know, he understood that my mission was the same as his mission. You know, I, I'm a winner just like how how he wants to or how he is. And, you know, when you see things or people that are like minded, you gravitate towards those things. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we are like minded people. Right. Did he ever say anything vocally, verbally about, man, look, bro. I got to get that championship. Man, Shaq done got, we went to Miami, done got, him a, done got him a chip, and he done got one without me, and he up there, you know, he done writing diss tracks, he talking <laughs> if. I mean, did, was he ever verbal about that, or you can just tell the way he practiced, the way he moved, mm-hmm. that that was very, very important well, to Sometimes him. he would come in practice just aggravated, you know, wouldn't say shit to nobody, and you can tell, like, in, like, his demeanor that those things was ticking him off, you know? Like, he wanted it bad right he wanted it real bad and uh, I'm not sure if it was a competition between him and Shaq if it was I wouldn't have known because he never like spoke bad about him about mm-hmm. big fella at all but I know that his drive was always to be the best he probably you know that's why he wore number 24 because he wanted to be better one better than than, yeah you know yeah. so because 8 to 24 really doesn't make any sense no sense at all <laughs> <laughs> so yeah yeah so you had Phil Jackson. What was playing for Phil like? Um, playing for PJ was dope because it wasn't. We had a system in place, right? So it wasn't really like he had to come up with like crazy schemes inside that system. He just had to be able to manage personalities, and I think that's where he was the best at managing personalities, right. getting like huge personalities to how do you do that? <clears throat> to come together? Because you know. You, Mike was Mike. And it's easy for Mike because there's nobody else on that team that knows. Scotty is not thinking he's as good as Mike. Jordan and Ron Harper. I don't know about that. Scotty Mike. Scotty was probably just as. That's the, and that's the thing that like media, I feel like, don't like point out. You think Scotty thought he was just as good as Mike? I, not defensively. Not defensively. Hey, we know what, we know what Scotty is. But I'm talking a about score. Yeah, I don't think I don't think he I think he felt like his impact was just as important. Wow. Yeah. Why wouldn't it be? Yeah, I'm not saying that's not. But I think when, when I look at Shaq and Kobe, there are the there are the point. There are the, there are the defining point that Kobe said, I'm just as good as this mofo, bro. Mm-hmm. Y'all, y- y'all say whatever you want to say. And I understand what he is, but I'm just as good. Nobody is as dominant as Shaq. Yeah. They changed the rules for Shaq. Mm-hmm. That's just what's, what's real. But 
when you look at, I mean, how old are you with Kobe? Kobe got to the league what about ninety six or ninety six? He got in ninety six. You 11. came into so you came eleven. So you saw the maturation. You saw the guy that airballed the ball in Utah. Yeah. And then you see, like, hold on. Are you sure dude 18? Are you sure he's 19? And then at, at 20, 21, 22, 22, he's got a third championship. His body changed. He locked in come to a completely different level. Yeah, he's he's after, I guess, to me, he's the best player ever. Wow. Yeah. He is. You got Kobe over Mike? That's just my favorite player. Right. But I mean, I, Mike is in a completely different, he's by himself. Right. Um, but if I had to say, Kobe is the best player ever. When, when you uh, when you said uh, you you texted him, Kobe legs and say you texted Kobe a photo of him <laughs> shooting over three people and Kobe says means someone should, <laughs> should have an easy put back if I miss. Yeah, he meant that. Like, <laughs> he he laughed, but he was dead ass serious. Right. Because yeah, again, like you said, those teams that he was on, he probably felt that. You know, they they could get the putbacks. Right. He felt like his his shot was the best shot, even if it was on three or four people. I mean, how I mean, when you look at when I look at the NBA now, it's like when Kobe came, the Jordan shoe was the lick. Yeah. Now it seems to be the Kobe shoe is the what the Jordan shoe used to be to the NBA players today. Yeah. Am I correct in that? Uh, I think on the court for sure. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Kobe, Kobe's shoe is, you know, the shoe to wear. And I believe it's probably that because I feel like Jordan limit the type of shoes that he let the players wear. Now, really? If he, if, if he let players wear like the retros and all that, then, you know, it might be a little bit even. But, I mean, Kobe sh- Kobe's shoes are more comfortable. Yeah, because the he don't really let them wear the, like, the Jordan. He, wear, he let them wear the Jordan line. He don't let him wear that old stuff, the stuff that he actually wore. Fact. That's, yeah. Well, he tried to sell the Jordan line. He ain't really tried to. The retro, <laughs> the, retro the Nike thing, they're going to do, they do that. They're going to sell regardless. Right. I need y'all to get some of these, these right. Jason Tatum and right, this, right. this other stuff. Exactly. Forget on the court because I think in order for the game is what you do off the court. Yeah. So from a practice standpoint, from a training standpoint, what are some of the similarities and some of the difference that you notice that Kobe did and Bron did? Uh, it's the work for sure. Like the amount of work that they put in is the same. Um, Bron will be doing work that you don't even know, like at home or like offsite. And then he'll still be at the gym before everybody on the court. Then he'll be in the training room getting his body right. Then he'll be getting jumpers up after the game. Then he'll, I mean, after practice, then he'll be back in the, the training room or in the weight room stretching. So, you know, the amount of work that he puts into the game is, you know, pretty much similar. The person is just different. They're different? Yeah. What's the biggest difference? Bron is more, Bron is like more people personable. Person. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He, he, he's definitely more of a- Kobe a give person. you the middle finger. He, yeah, he's like, <laughs> 